especially coming off Drake's been great. Like I really feel like I'm starting to click things together. Uh, it's been a while since we've really strung together a lot of workouts and races together. Obviously COVID last year kind of interrupted a lot of things. I moved from Portland back here. So there's been a lot of interruptions in training and racing over the last 18 months or so. So it's been nice to have the last three months as far as stringing weeks together of training, now get a couple of races under my belt where I'm mentally and physically kind of confident in what I'm doing. So it's been, been an exciting couple of weeks now. Yeah, so I was doing a lot of training actual blocks here back in Northeast Ohio at the time I still lived in Portland. Um, but I was working with Coach Labadee, so I was back here a little bit. And I remember being here when COVID was kind of shutting down the world, the NBA getting canceled, NCAA is being canceled indoors. Uh, all those things were kind of happening in front of me. I, moved, I went back to Portland uh, to do my next training block there. And I had a little injury. I was kind of dealing with that, trying to get back from that, train as well, get myself ready for the Olympics. We're trying to figure out where we're going to race. And then all of a sudden it was like the seasons, all these meets started to get canceled. And then it became text from my agent said, hey, the Olympics are probably gonna get canceled. And then within, I think, 24 hours, it was kind of just like the announcement was made of like postponement, cancellation, et cetera, however you wanna, they wanted to word it at first. And so things kind of escalated very quickly as it kind of happened across the world. Uh, but for me, it was for sure, I don't think it was a shock because at that point things had already been canceled. You see an NBA season get canceled, it's kind of like, not looking too good for a global uh, event with, with thousands of people coming into one place. I think there's a couple of thoughts, just like, it was kind of, at first I was kind of like, well, great, we're still gonna have a season. It's just, there's not gonna be an Olympics. And then very quickly, within minutes of that, the season dissipated very quickly. Uh, so that was like, that positivity out of it was gone. Uh, our sports built around the Olympics so much and we rely so much in the Olympics when it comes to uh, exposure for our sport, for us as athletes, for our own brands, as well as our financial uh, well-being, I guess, is, is stemmed from the Olympics. So for me, it was kind of like, what do I do? Like, where do we go from here? Like, I still had my contract. I was still like making a living, but at the same time, our potential for earnings was, was gone, dissipated for the entire season when it comes to racing and prize money and, and paying the bills when, when you look down to it. So it was kind of like, what do we do? Like, where do we go from here? And so kind of getting my ducks in a row with that, making sure that, that we could get through the year, I guess, as, as a, my wife and I, and make sure we were okay there. And then it kind of looked at as, so where do I go from here to get ready for 2021 and beyond? Uh, it very quickly became, now with our sport, what it was in cycles of uh, every four years, the Olympics and every other year being a world championships and those being our highlights. Now it became 21 through 26 became a world championship or Olympic year every year. There was no off years. There was no peaks and valleys of, our, of my career anymore. It was gonna be a, five, six week or five, six year stretch of get after it and then see what happens. So now our focus became that. Opportunities, obviously galore. I mean, things like this, getting to sit down and talk. Uh, I mean, how to not win the bronze, probably wouldn't be sitting here talking about this and having a story. I mean, being in meets and standing on the line and hearing that is kind of gives you a little tingle every time uh, when they introduce me at a meet. Uh, I've had opportunities come up around the world and races in the world that I would never have had the opportunity to race in uh, had I not earned that and, and won that medal in 2016. So just the opportunities that have arisen are, are awesome. The people I've got to meet along the way, the places I've got to see has been, has been an experience for sure over the last couple of years. To be honest, I don't replay it too often. I don't rewatch it, I don't replay it. That's one of the, like, the least watched races that I, that I, that I rewatch. Uh, I watch a lot more of, uh, I guess, uh, races that I think are harder to watch for me, like races I want to learn from or races that I did something else right in uh, because I, I did a lot right in that race and I don't want to just rewatch what I did right. I want to watch and relearn what I did wrong. Uh, so there's a lot of like learning with that, motivation from other races, uh, different things like that. That was such a whirlwind of a day that my emotions within the race aren't theoretically as clear to me as other races when it's like a one-off. Like I know exactly how I was thinking during the race. So honestly, I don't run through that day very often. It's a little bit of surreal. It's a little bit of just kind of like that pinch yourself moment, that tingle feeling that I say, cause it's kind of like, dang, I really did. I really did achieve that. As much as I don't look back on it, I think about it. Uh, I did really achieve something that, that was a goal of mine and I achieved it very early on in my career. So it's at the same time, it's a pinch yourself dream moment. It's a, it's a very much a, I want to, I want more of that feeling too. I think for me, like the bullseye on the back things, uh, obviously there, I mean, having the Olympic medal next to your name brings attention to you. But at the same time, uh, there's been really strong 800 meter runners across the US as well and across the world who have performed really well over the last uh, couple years. 
So at the same time, I feel like there's a bullseye. There's, I feel like there's pressure I put on myself to compete with, with the best in the U.S. and the best in the world as well. So it just kind of brings an excitement feeling because I don't necessarily like to be the favorite. I like kind of having that underdog or that competitive nature. Uh, so as much as there is that, I guess what you want to call bullseye or the pressure to make the team because I've done it before. I have the Olympic medal. I'm defending like U.S. Olympic trials champion. Like all that stuff's great. But at the same time, there's so much more that I want to achieve and do that that stuff's just kind of like in my back pocket in there, but I'm so much more looking forward to, to racing other people and, and doing it again. Prior to 2016, I was every race I'd run in, I was the underdog, period. There, I couldn't, we really couldn't find a race where I was the favorite, quote unquote. In post Olympics, I quickly became a favorite in a lot of races. So it became everybody keying off of me in races versus me keying off other people. And so there for sure was a big learning curve with that, uh, both mentally and like performance wise to learn that. But now I've raced in both situations where it, the underdog and the favorite roles for me are created outside. And for me within myself, it doesn't matter if I'm the favorite or the underdog, I'm still, I gotta race the same people. I still have to, to win the race no matter if I'm the favorite or not. There's no, you don't get any handicaps in our, in our sport, uh, like horse racing or with, uh, the, the, you don't get any betting odds, you know? Like whoever the favorite is the favorite still has to win on the day. So it's a uh, favorite or underdog for me, it's just fun to get out there and compete and, and do it every time. For me, it's like, I have almost two homes. Uh, so I, and I spent three years in Portland. So at the same time, I, I was talking to somebody the other day and I called Portland home. And so for me, it's, it's been, I've had, obviously grew up small town and really close. So obviously for me, like that's my first home, uh, Tri Village and, and the small community around there is obviously where I started. And then things kind of took off in Northeast Ohio, uh, continued my career back in Portland and then now back in Northeast Ohio. So it's kind of been all over the place. and. And I was talking with somebody the other day as well, and I said that I feel back at home in Northeast Ohio. And I was just like, I just feel comfortable here. Like I know the restaurants, I know the roads. I don't need my, like, my Google Maps here anymore like I did in Portland. Uh, so for me, it's like, it, it, I have multiple homes. And so for me, uh, I don't mind getting claimed by, by all three. Uh, it's just a lot of fun to be able to represent like Northeast Ohio, small town Ohio, and then as well as kind of have that little bit of like Portland, Oregon home, Nike, Beaverton feeling as well, kind of in the back pocket. I mean, for me, post 2016 Olympics and even the trials itself too, were, were super awesome to see all the watch parties. I mean, there was one in my high school. I know like a bunch of the Akron uh, community had one. And like you said, there's bars all over Northeast Ohio that were playing it and back home. And so like, that was really cool. It's, it's beyond being seeing people like just post it from their living room. You know, you get the Instagram tag of somebody watching the race, uh, a normal race in their living room on TV, but to see it, I got a bar or to hear the stories of people who were like, hey, we were driving and all of a sudden we had to pull over to the side of the road and we knew your race was on, so we stopped at the bar and made the, the bartender turn on your race and everybody at the bar was cheering for you who had no idea who you were. Like for me, that's really cool. And, and, like, and, and our sport's such a built around the Olympics and, and America loves the Olympics when it comes down to it, but to, it's kind of like that, that feeling of having a, a, somebody you know in the Olympics and competing on a world stage in front of millions of people uh, versus just watching like the NBA finals or the Super Bowl. You're like, oh, I have a connection to the team, you know, like I cheer for that team. But to kind of have a feeling where I know that person competing and, and, and the individuality of the Olympics kind of makes it, I think, an extremely special experience to, to not only be in, but then to get to watch and experience with the person there. I try to keep things really simple. Uh, I've been like known to overthink things, so it's a lot of simplicity of like certain keys that I have to key off of or do or, or want to achieve during the race. Uh, and then it's really just trying to have fun with it whether it's uh, getting a text message from my wife or calling my wife before I leave the hotel and just kind of keeping things light and coach trying to crack a joke in the morning of the race because I get, get a little caught up in my head and a little serious, which is great and all, and I have to be focused, but at the same time, like I have to have that kind of, that edge of fun and relax. So it's a little bit of simplicity and edge and competitiveness, but also that, that smile and that laugh as well. Since I met him in 2013, he's obviously been a huge part of my life, both on and off the track. So for me, uh, to achieve what we did in 2016 was awesome. And it's like, I tell people now, it's like, there's such a team behind me that you just don't see. And uh, I cross the line and I get the, I get the medal and, and everything kind of comes under Clayton Murphy, but it's really like a huge team behind me, whether it's coach, my wife, my massage therapist, strength coach, PT, like all those people are, are, are a big part of what I do. And I, I tell my wife every day, I was like, I, can't, I can only go as far as we go. I can only go as far as like coach and I go. There's, there's no me when it comes to the end result. So, it's, it's been a huge part of, of what I've done over the last, I guess, seven years now. 
I just keep the metal in the house. I, I don't get it out very often. Obviously, if it's a like a public appearance thing or something where they've asked to do it, I'll, I'll take it out for that. But uh, other than having to move uh, across the country or do something like that, it doesn't really necessarily move within the house or get out very often. Unless obviously family or something comes and wants to see it, then it kind of comes out. But for me personally, like. I don't think my wife and I have ever decided that, hey, we're going to get out the Olympic pedal.